Hey guys, thanks for joining us today here on uh, Pure Minds YouTube channel. My name's Brandon. I produce under the name Smoltron, and I'm a graduate of Pure Minds Complete Producer Program, and I'm now working for them as a studio manager, uh, sound designer, and dialogue editor. Um, today I'm going to show you one of my favorite uh, music production tips uh, inside of Ableton. What I'm going to show you here is uh, something that I like to do to keep uh, producing fun and fresh and just uh, kind of hands-on. It's really easy, to, I find, to get sort of sucked into the details of, you know, just making sure that EQ is perfectly dialed or, oh, is this setting, uh, you know, modulating at the perfect rate? I'm not sure, you know. It's easy to get sucked into that stuff. So uh, we're going to zoom out today and uh, focus on a workflow that's just uh, a lot of fun. One thing that a lot of my favorite producers uh, in the genre of sort of dubstep inspired bass music um, like to do is they, they have hardware synths that they send a MIDI pattern out to and then they record the audio of them adjusting the settings like the knobs on, the, on their hardware synths and that gives them a, a pool of a couple minutes of audio to collect their favorite uh, moves from. So you know they're kind of experimenting with the settings and then you know here and there they'll find really cool things that they've uh, created in that experiment and it's all there in the audio and they can just cut it out and use that in their uh, in their arrangement. The thing is hardware synths are pretty uh, expensive and not a lot of people have them. But a lot of us have uh, MIDI controllers and uh, uh, a DAW such as Ableton. So uh, you can do pretty much the same thing that these guys are doing with their hardware synths all inside of Ableton using just uh, MIDI controllers, uh, which a lot more people uh, have access to. So I brought in my MIDI fighters here. I've got the 3D and the Twister. And uh, mostly I'm gonna be focusing on the Twister today because I'm going to be sending the, a MIDI pattern to just a synth with a couple synths actually within Ableton. And then I'm going to play with some settings on those synths using the knobs uh, that I've mapped to the twister. And then I'm gonna record that audio and uh, use that as a bed to uh, pull synths from for, for an arrangement. All right, so the first thing you're gonna need to do to set this process up is uh, just have a couple of synths that you like and uh, pick some parameters that you wanna play with. Now, I've started with just operator here, which is uh, Ableton's FM synth. FM is frequency modulation, if you're not familiar. And uh, as you can see on this diagram here, the current setting is that the synths are running, or the oscillators of the operator are running into each other, uh, doing frequency modulation to each one. So D is modulating C, C is modulating B, and B is ultimately modulating A, which is what you're hearing. Now you can change that by going into this tab and choosing different configurations. So this end one, for example, has no frequency modulation, but uh, we're gonna leave the frequency modulation on and stick with the original configuration today. So you can also see that I've got some effects on here. I've got chorus, I've got the phaser, and uh, an auto filter, which we'll be uh, doing some mapping on, and just a OTT, which is a multiband uh, compressor preset in Ableton. Um, that really just thickens up your uh, sounds. I'll include a link so you can download this session and uh, play with these synths yourself. But I'll show you what I've done with them here. So uh, you're gonna wanna make an instrument rack. You can uh, just select all of your devices and hit Command G and that'll create the rack here that I've got. And then by default your macros will be hidden so you'll need to hit this button to expose them. And uh, I like to use macros to map because it makes things simple. It puts them all in this little grid over here. You don't have to do that. You can just hit Command M like this and map pretty much anything. But uh, the macros help you stay organized and you can map multiple things onto the same macro and get some combo moves going. So how you're gonna set up these macros is um, you're, gonna, you're gonna hit the map button here, choose any parameter that you like, and then hit the map button over here. So I'll unmap this first one and show you how to do that. So I've taken that off, now it's open. You can see it's available to map. I'll select this, the level of oscillator D. So that's like the top level oscillator in the frequency modulation series here in the operator. And I'm gonna map that to this knob. And then you can see I've done this with the rest and I'll go through what I did uh, for those. But now you can see this is uh, on this knob, you turn it and you can see the, the level on oscillator D over there moving as well. And then to MIDI map, if you're uh, unclear on that, you just hit Command M, select the uh, knob that you want to map to, and then turn the physical knob on your device to map it. So I'll delete that mapping, click on that, 
turn the knob, and it's mapped. And now as you can see when I turn this knob, we're changing the level of oscillator D. Perfect. So on this bass synth, which I'll play for you here, just so you can hear what we're working with. That's uh, what we're starting with, and now I've uh, mapped that oscillator D. I've mapped uh, this macro 2 is the decay, um, and it is also the sustain level. So that way I can shorten the synth like so. So by bringing the sustain down and the decay down, you're shortening the amp envelope of the synth to create a, a shorter, more gated feel. Uh, the next thing I have is a chorus that just widens it up. Then we've got uh, the filter. Definitely one to map is the filter frequency there. Um, I've got the one in operator mapped there. And then I've got the, uh, the course knob on this lowest level oscillator on, on the operator, which is the one that you're hearing, and that's uh, just the pitch of that particular oscillator. And since that's the one that you're hearing, that's the one that's going to have the, the strongest effect. If you were to map the course knob of B, C, or D, you'll hear something, but it'll be less pronounced than this. So you can see that's a big effect. Then the last three here are all mapped to settings on the auto filter over here. So we've got rate, we've got amount, and uh, shape on the LFO. And uh, I've got the frequency set at a specific point in here around uh, one to two kilohertz here. And uh, that just lets, when I turn up this LFO, that was a, a nice spot for, uh, to get some, some filter wobbling here, as you can see. So I've got, that's the amount. You can change the rate. And then the shape also. So now what you're gonna wanna do is duplicate out your uh, drums so you can stay in time with your modulation and your synth as long as you wanna uh, play with them. So I'm just gonna go for about two minutes here. You can go for longer if you like. And that'll be the amount of audio that you'll have at the end of the process. So what I'm gonna do next is create an audio track and rename it Bass Audio. And then I'm just gonna route the audio from my bass uh, synth track into this audio track. Then I'm gonna unsolo the bass track so we can hear the drums as we go through, but I'm gonna turn off the art because we'll come back to him. Then I'm gonna command click this record enable button so I can enable both the audio track and the MIDI track and record. The advantage to doing things this way as opposed to going in and trying to create sounds like this individually is that you can just come up with all these variations so quickly. Um, and it's just fun. You get to, to, to play with your MIDI controllers and, uh, and get hands on and, and you get just such a wide range of things. And the reason that's helpful is in uh, a lot of these genres like dubstep, trap, just any sort of bass music really, you're looking for a high uh, variety of synth sounds. So if you're just stuck on the same synth sound your whole song, it's going to be stale, it's not going to be very exciting. So you need these variations and you need a, a large number of them usually. Uh, to fill all of the, the little holes in your song to make it sound really complete and finished. So one thing you can do once you have this bed of, of audio here is go ahead and create a MIDI track and grab a, a sampler, throw it on there, or sampler if you, if you want the full suite of options, but to keep it simple, we'll use the sampler. And we'll look for a good cut here. <laughs> I like that one. Get a little filter resonance on there. So you just select your cut and drag it on down. Now once you're in the simpler, 
you basically got this sound as a new synth. So if we switch our solo over here, you can play it back at different notes. You can change the start point so you can get different different sounds out of it like that. You've got all the settings in here as far as, you know, you can reshape the envelope if you want. So you turn the sustain down and turn the, de the decay down and turn it into more of a pluck. So it just gives you access to a lot of variety very quickly. So you can do a similar technique with uh, lead sounds and uh, my favorite uh, type of synth to use this on is like an arpeggiated lead because it gives you a lot of options for mapping knobs and, uh, and getting a lot of variation out of that as well. And so as you can hear I have just this uh, simple square wave synth I made in uh, analog here. And all I've got on that is some chorus, auto filter, simple delay, and reverb. It's a pretty basic uh, lead setup. So that's what he sounds like. Now the maps, or the knobs that I've chosen to map here, the, the settings that I've chosen to, to modulate, are the arpeggiator rate. The gate, which is the length of uh, the note. The delay time and uh, dry wet are these two guys. Then I've got the filter frequency, which is a total go-to for modulating. Then I've got an LFO on here, which is a uh, square LFO. I'll show you that. This is back to the auto filter. This is similar to what we did on the bass synth. So on the auto filter, you can see I've got the mode set to square. And then I'm modulating the, or I've mapped the amount, the rate, and the frequency this time, as opposed to the, the waveform. And the reason that I want it square is because at the right frequency, it will turn the uh, pattern basically all the way on and off. And so you can just hear it like every bar, or every two bars, uh, like so. So you can hear it going back and forth on and off, where if this is turn down, you hear it all the time. And then the last thing I've got on here is the, the chorus. So basically we just do the same thing, create an audio track, say your input, this time to the ARP. Go ahead and unsolo that. Record enable, hit command to record enable both tracks at the same time. Gonna wanna turn the loop off, duplicate it out. Won't go quite as long this time and then record again. And so there you go, it's about the same, uh, same technique as we did with the bass. You've just got all, this, all these uh, varieties of uh, of that same synth that you can cut out. Thanks again for joining us here on uh, Pier Mind's YouTube channel. I'm Brandon, AKA Smoltron. Uh, subscribe to our channel for more videos like this and we hope to see you here again. If you're a music producer, subscribe to our channel and stay up to date on the latest Pier Mind tutorial videos, track breakdowns, elite sessions, and more. Visit us at PierMind.com.